Arnold, when I think about you, the adjective that comes to mind, I was, I was asking myself this question earlier today, that the adjective that comes to mind for me is resilient. And uh, f- many people have seen the Netflix miniseries, Arnold, and one of the lines, and I'm not going to get this perfectly right, that stuck out to me was that your upbringing made you but broke your brother. And I'm probably getting the phrasing off a little bit, but I'm wondering if you could just elaborate on that a little bit and speak to what the upbringing was like, and then also what made you different from your brother in that respect? I think that my brother was a nature more fragile. And and I never really realized that when I kind of grew up, but just the very fact, certain things that kind of unfolded made me then realize that. Mm -hmm. And there was two things. One of them was that he was more fragile. And the other one was that he appeared to be more fragile. And that I appeared to be stronger. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm saying that is because, like, for instance, when he was, like, 11 years old and he was going to school in Graz outside the village and he had to go with the bus there, then they had to be picked up at the bus station a half an hour away from our house, and then it was night in the window in the fall, and then he was afraid to go home. He would say, I'm afraid to go home by myself. And so my father would turn to me and say, well, Arnold, can you pick him up? I give you a shilling every night that you pick him up. So I'm going to end of the week five shilling. Is it because on Saturday, it was only half day school, so he would go home at the time when it was still light. So I said to him, oh, yeah, yeah, I pick him up. No problem. He says, you're not afraid? I said, <laughs> you kidding me? No. But in the meantime, I was also scared shitless. <laughs> so I appeared tougher than my brother, but I was also afraid. Mm. But I was not afraid enough not to go. Mm-hmm. So I did go, even though I was afraid. My brother refused to go because he was afraid. Mm-hmm. So there was both, that I was a little tougher than him, but that I also pretended to be tougher than him. Hmm. And so that kind of unfolded as time went on. So as we were punished and beaten and all of this kind of things that was going on, it was clear that my brother couldn't quite handle the thing because he ran away more often from home. Well, not only more often ran away because I never ran away. So he, w- he ran away, and he would not appear sometimes for a week. My father would have to look for him all over the place. And he was scared that he got lost, is he gone, or what is going on. So it freaked him out. And he treated him for a while when he came back home. He treated him for, for a while nicer, and then, you know, it started getting to be, again, too much for him. So what happened was, really, when I look back, was that each time my father punished us, it made my brother more and more vulnerable and weaker. And it made me stronger. So I thrived on that kind of like, my mind started gearing up to, I'm going to get back at him. I'm going to leave this house as soon as I can. I'm going to be out of here at the age of 18. I'm going to go to the military, and then I'm going to go and get my passport, and then I'm going to go to Germany, and then I'm going to go to America, and I'm going to be out of here. This is it. I'm not going to take this any longer. And it would make me stronger and really set a program and set a goal and a vision of what I'm going to do in life. Whereas my brother crumbled. He got weaker. He started drinking. He started uh, getting involved in alcohol. And uh, I could see in his behavior that he didn't behave well. He was abusive. And and eventually he died because of a car accident, drunk driving. We had, with the age of, he was, I think, 24 and I was 23 when that happened. I was already in America at that time. But it was like, it was really sad because I could see that he just could not handle any more the punishment. 
and I could. I was thriving on it, and I used it to my big plus and as a support system. And it was like all about kind of like gave me the motivation. It created the fire in the belly. It made me create a vision, a necessary vision. This is what I want to do. I want to get to America. I have to become a bodybuilding champion. I have to get away from home. I had to find my a new father figure. My father was great to be the father, the official father, but there were others, the trainer in the weightlifting club, Kurt Manor, and Mui. There was a guy that could now, that we also knew that was in his 40s and 50s, that became a father figure, a very smart guy that spoke English and was very worldly. And then there was a Jewish fellow there that became our kind of mentor and helped us with the weightlifting club. So this all became kind of my new father figures in the way. And then eventually Joe Weider when I came to America and all of those people I looked up right away as an idol because they would kind of like treat me in a better way. And they would educate me and they would really, you know, kind of usher me along and nurture me along. And uh, so, but I never really resented my father because of it. I always kind of felt that he served a really extraordinary purpose for me, not for my brother, but for me, which means to get me to America, to become a great champion, to have that will, to be able to work no matter how many hours it takes, to do no matter what it takes, and to not shy away from misery or from pain or from obstacles or from falling down and having to get up again and crawl on all four from nothing. It, that was the power and the strength my father gave me. And so I've always kind of like appreciated that. And nothing comes in the perfect package because I knew that if he would have given me all the love and if he would have not done none of that, and if I would have had all the money in the world, I would have not grown up as tough. Mm -hmm. And I would not have been able to accomplish what I did coming to America and becoming this world bodybuilding champion and do all the things that I was that I was doing. It was all because of that upbringing. And so when I look at, for instance, my in-laws, you know, when I see those kids, they're very smart kids in the Kennedy family. But I always felt kind of like they couldn't have grown up like Maria or Maria's brothers or, you know, anyone around them. They couldn't have grown up or my children couldn't grow up with the same desire and the same hunger. Yeah, but they can get other qualities. And so that's the key thing to focus then on that. But I mean, they could never have that quality of hunger and desire and deep inside kind of like reach, being able to reach inside no matter what it takes.